Material rarely dries without going mouldy in humid tropical regions. So in these areas, an additional precaution is to place the bundles into a large, heavy-duty plastic bag. Then add a litre of 70% ethanol for every 30 centimetre thickness of material. Gather and fold over the top of the bag before sealing with a rubber band. Wash the ethanol over the specimens. As long as there are no leaks, the specimens will be preserved for weeks, even months. So it's wise to double bag them. Back at the herbarium, they are transferred to a press and dried. Alcohol can dissolve wax on the plant surfaces and turn the specimens brown. Note in the collecting book that alcohol was used to prepare them. Material for anatomical and embryological study, as well as some very delicate species, are best preserved in liquid fixative. A common mix is formalin, propionic acid and ethanol. To maximise infiltration of the solution, cut the material to size. Remember to put a tag with the collector's name and number. The containers need to be leak-proof. Use plenty of liquid. After three days or more, the FPA can be decanted into a waste bottle and replaced with an 18 to 1 solution of 70% ethanol and glycerol for indefinite storage. Take care to avoid contact with or even breathing the solution. Formaldehyde in particular is toxic. A word of caution. Only use these techniques under guidance and with the correct safety procedures. The Herbarium Handbook by Bridson and Foreman has details of these techniques. Plant DNA is well preserved when plant material is cut into small pieces and dried in fine grade silica gel. This material can be stored for later extraction and study. Dried fine grade silica gel, approximately 100 to 200 grams with some indicator crystals, are placed in Ziploc bags. About 100 grams of healthy young foliage is placed in the bags with the bag sealed. When propagation from seed or cuttings is difficult, transplanting whole plants may be an option. Try to remove the root system intact. Reduce water loss by cutting back the foliage portion of the plant. If returning to your work base within two days, place the plants in open plastic bags and water lightly. Keep out of direct sunlight. Generally, pot up on return. In the case of grasses and other monocots, leave them for up to three days, then pot up. This will encourage new root formation. If you are more than two days away from your work base, wrap the plants in moist newspaper. And remember, pickled silica gel or living material samples should always be complemented by a standard herbarium specimen or voucher. That covers general collecting techniques. We'll look now at some material that requires a bit more specialised handling. Plants with bisexual or hermaphrodite flowers require only one collection to secure male and female parts. Monoecious plants may have male and female flowers mixed or separated on different parts of an individual plant. If they are segregated, sample branches with female and male flowers as part of one collection. Two separately and consecutively numbered specimens should be made for dioecious plants. Cross-reference the numbers in the collecting book and refer to the sex of the other specimen. Otherwise, Material from each plant is on a separate sheet with separate collecting numbers for material from different individuals, even those of the same species. A good eucalypt specimen includes adult and juvenile foliage, well-developed flower buds and mature fruit. Be sure to record the bark type. Additional material might include some bark and flowers. When pressing big leaves, Cut the leaf with a portion of the branch to show the leaf arrangement and auxiliary bud. Slightly oversized specimens can be bent or zigzagged to fit one sheet. Dry fruits and other fragments that are too large or hard to press are best placed in a paper bag. Label the bag with the collector's name and specimen number. Succulents have the potential to just close up shop but not die with standard drying techniques. So to avoid growing mouldy cactus pads in your press, 
Slice them to make them thinner, then drop them in boiling water for a couple of minutes or cook them in a microwave oven for about the same period. You can continue the normal drying process or cool them in liquid fixative before pressing. Retaining at least part of the collection in liquid is a good practice. When collecting ferns and fern allies, make sure that you include fertile sporing material. Sporing leaves have yellow to brown spots or lines on their underside. The rhizome should be sampled too. Where the fertile and sterile fronds are different in shape or dimorphic, take both. For tree ferns, a sample of the base of a frond with any scales is also important. Bryophytes, that is mosses and liverworts, and lichens are generally best collected into labelled paper bags. Bryophytes and lichens growing on leaves can be gently pressed as for vascular plants. When pressing very large leaves, again collect the leaf attached to some of the branch. If the leaves are too large to fit on one sheet, cut the specimen and prepare more than one sheet. Label it with the same number and a fraction to indicate that it is, say, sheet two of three. With really enormous leaves, such as palm fronds, trim most but not all of the leaf blade off and fold the remaining portion to fit the sheet. Retain a portion of the base of the leaf stalk too. Specimens of herbaceous dicots and most monocots, such as grass and lilies, should include the base of the plant with any underground organs. If the plants are small relative to the herbarium sheet, collect several whole specimens, roots and all, to fill at least one sheet. All this material has the same collecting number. Robust or firm aquatic plants can be collected and pressed in the same fashion as land plants. Fragile, flimsy floating plants and algae need to be floated onto a sheet of blotting paper. Write the collector's name and specimen number in pencil directly on a piece of thick cartridge paper. Then place the cartridge paper on a firm backing in a tray of water. Float the specimen onto the paper and arrange the specimen. Lifting from one end, Place the cartridge paper with specimen onto dry newspaper. Cover the specimen with fine muslin or nylon stocking before covering with newspaper and load into a press for drying. A simple alternative for small and fine aquatics is to preserve them in liquid fixative. Correct procedures for preserving and presenting are equally as important in determining the quality of plant specimens. We have looked at a variety of collection techniques in the field and now we turn to the handling, curation and use of plant specimens in the herbarium. A collection of good plant specimens needs to be pressed and dried. Day presses can be used in the field but the specimens are ultimately transferred to presses in the laboratory. Pressing is a process of turning a 3D specimen into one that's more or less two-dimensional. This process preserves material better than specimens left to dry without pressure. A press of wooden narrow slats screwed or riveted together are light, strong and allow air movement. Metal presses will not rot and are very robust. Old fridge trays can be adapted to fit the purpose. Transferring material from a day press is straightforward. Starting with one side of a press, simply sandwich each specimen into its newspaper folder between two sheets of corrugated cardboard. For most specimens, tabloid newspapers make ideal folders, interwoven around the specimen. They're more convenient than broad sheets and not so tempting to read. For bulky and uneven specimens, add one or more sheets of foam to maintain even pressure across the whole of the specimen. A foam substitute is crumpled paper. Placing a sheet of corrugated cardboard between each wrapped specimen will allow greater airflow and faster drying of the specimens. For grasses and most sclerophylla specimens, this is all that's needed. When dealing with soft, broad-leaved or moist plant specimens, especially when working in the tropics, aluminium sheets will speed up heat transfer and drying. Sandwich the aluminium between cardboard corrugates and complete the press with the second side and strap. The stack can be as tall as the straps are long. Straps can be simple cord, rope or leather belts, but these are made from strong nylon webbing with snap-shut buckles. 
They are long enough to make a very large press.